Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Storm of Carnage right here on the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to talk about is this, uh, you know, Naomi Harris rumor that's going around, or I guess she's in talks right now. Uh, we did hear that Shriek might be a character that's going to be in the upcoming Venom 2 movie, or Venom vs. Carnage, or Maximum Carnage, whatever they're going to call it. And, uh, and you know, that excited me at first because, like I said, I was like, hey, I want a character that's a non-symbiote and be a threat to Venom. And Shriek's a great one because in the comics, obviously, she's kind of the the love interest, uh, the surrogate mother in the family that you know Cletus Cassidy slash Carnage is building in the comics. It started in Maximum Carnage. Her first appearance was Spider-Man Unlimited number one in 1993, I think, and that was uh, the beginning of the Maximum Carnage storyline. And she was another inmate named Francis Barrison, and uh, she was another inmate in uh, Ravencroft with Cletus Cassidy. And he meets her. He sees her powers. He kind of is intrigued. He likes her the cut of her jig. She's very psychotic, obviously. And and so he's like, all right, this is great. You know, we're like a regular Bonnie and Clyde kind of thing, only like just 10 times more psychotic. And uh, and so, you know, they kind of hook up and they become like this surrogate family that Carnage starts building for himself of psychopaths. He never really liked his original family. They're all normal, boring people. But now he starts to build this family that has, a, you know, doppelganger in it and Demo Goblin and uh, Carry On as well. And all of them and, a, uh, you know, a couple other villains go out and cause, you know, carnage in New York City during the Maximum Carnage storyline. And now a lot of them have come back during Absolute Carnage, uh, like in Lethal Protectors, Frank Terry elevated the character of uh, of Shriek here into the new Demogoblin. She, like, merged with this demon spirit from hell, I guess, and is now the Demogoblin. So, uh, so yeah, so the, the character's still around. She's still causing mayhem. And uh, she, you know, we talked about her recently, too, in a storyline where uh, in Nova or, or one of the, oh, it was Deadpool, I think it was Deadpool versus Carnage, uh, where he, like, Deadpool injured her, caused Carnage to injure Shriek, and that caused Carnage to stop fighting. Uh, he saw her injured, and then he was like, you know what, just take me away, <laughs> you know, like, he's like, uh, this battle's over, we'll fight another day, I'll wait for her to heal, and we'll fight another day. Um, but he felt actually guilty. And that was the first time you ever saw real emotion like that out of Cleus Cassidy where he was concerned with someone. So there's a great importance of this character. Uh, she, maybe she's the only character that can kind of, you know, center... Uh, Cletus in a way, but of course she's going to center him in a psychotic way because she too is psychotic. Uh, so I'm excited for that, like that we're getting a character that we might be because Variety reported on it. Um, they said they heard it from two sources close to the project. That could be true. Obviously everyone at Variety, they're very tapped into that world. And uh, sometimes people working on the projects do on behalf of the company as part of the marketing might reach out to a company like Variety and be like, hey, we have some information. You know, it looks like we might be bringing this character in. We want to trickle that out because we might announce the casting soon. And we, again, we want to see how people react to it, how fans react to it. And that's why this information comes out there. We're all programmed in a way. Like, you know, this isn't just like, oh, someone, I mean, maybe someone diligently worked really hard and scooped this, uh, but most likely it's someone, you know, you know, they contact each other and we're like, hey, you got any scoops for Venom 2? It's like, yeah, we're, we might be, you know, revealing the cast soon. So here, let's trickle out some information about the character people can have like a week to digest that and then we'll start you know giving casting rumors and stuff and it uh, looks like that casting rumors finally happened so now that the shriek character looks like might most likely be in the film and again i said i was excited because it's a non-symbiote threat for venom to fight and uh, and i know there was some back and forth in my in the comment section in one of my other videos where someone said oh you know what i just hope this isn't cramming too many enemies in there which i agree in most films, you could probably handle two or three villains. Like, if it, it can be done, for sure. Because, like, Batman Begins, I thought was really good. It had, like, Zaz in it, but he played, like, a small part. It had Jonathan Crane in it and Ra's al Ghul. And then also had, like, some of the mob bosses, too. So they juggled a lot of villains really well. You can do it. I believe that. Uh, but sometimes Sony, I just feel like, not just including Spider-Man franchises, but also, like, Resident Evil, they're not very good at, like, they're, they're good at naming characters. They're like, oh, that's, you know, so-and-so. That's Chris Redfield. But it's like, all right, but he doesn't really do anything Chris redfield -esque. Um, and uh, and he's in a movie where his sister has amnesia. She can't even remember him. So what's the point of even making it Chris Redfield? Uh, so yeah, there's, I mean, things like that. So they don't have a great track record with me. So that's why I get a little, you know, cautious. I'm like, ah, but, you know, the character can be done well. And if you're going to do this, you know, build up to Maximum Carnage, I think that's a smart move, obviously. Whether they do it in this movie and they try to rush it, that would be kind of a bummer, but obviously they're not going to be able to do every single character and set every single character up uh, for a third movie. But maybe that's their plan. We'll see. You know, I'm thinking they're going to do Venom vs. Carnage in this movie, and the next movie will be Venom vs. Spider-Man, and maybe if there's any other 
characters they can throw into that, they probably will. Um, but uh, but we'll see. I mean, that's just my thoughts right now. But uh, right now they're talking about Naomi Harris possibly playing the role of Shriek, that she's in talks and negotiations for it. And I think this would be great. I was originally thinking, oh, wouldn't it be cool if it was Juliette Lewis and they did like a uh, you know Natural Born Killers reunion for this movie. Uh, that would have been fantastic. And then, you know, Juliette Lewis is a little bit older too. So she's closer to hit, you know, uh, Woody Harrelson's age. I, Cause I was just like, oh, I don't want some like young 20 year old girl to play like his love interest. That would be weird. Even though he's Cletus Cassidy and he is a weird guy. Uh, but Naomi Harris, this is great. She's a great casting choice. And uh, I, I've been a big fan of her since 28 days later. That was the first time I was introduced to her and I really liked her and I loved her in that movie. And so I kind of would see her pop up and sometimes I wouldn't even know it's her like I had a crush on her when 28 days later came out I was like oh man she's so pretty and she kicks so much butt um and then she was like in uh what was it Pirates of the Caribbean and a couple of those movies and I had no idea it was her I was like I was like wow that that actress is pretty good you know and then I'm like oh wait that's what that's Naomi Harris and then uh, I think it was recently I saw her in like you know or not recently but a couple years ago and stuff was the the James Bond movies where she played Money Penny, and I was like she kind of looks familiar. I don't remember where I know her from. And so I developed a crush on her as Money Penny and forgot she was the same lady from 28 Days Later. And then also uh, she was in a movie with The Rock called Rampage, which I really loved. It's like great, dumb, kind of fun. And I had no idea that was her and that she was Money Penny. So I developed a crush on Naomi Harris three different times uh, throughout my life and throughout her film career that I've seen her in films. And, uh, and I didn't know it was her each time. And so I was like, well, that's probably is a, a testament to her acting um, and the types of roles she takes, I would say. Um, so uh, the fact that she's up for this would be great because one, we haven't really seen her. I don't think we've seen her in any comic book movies. Um, that's what I liked about the first Venom movie is besides Tom Hardy, they try to bring in new talent, smart talent, Michelle Williams, you know, Riz Ahmed. And I was like, oh, this is great. This is, uh, this is, I, I like this stuff. Scott Decker, they were trying to get like, you know, other people in there. Um, Reed was in there, Scott Reed. And so uh, I was like, all right, this is cool. They're, they're, or Reed Scott, they're like doing really smart casting for this. And I hope that continues with this one. And Andy Serkis being at the helm, I would imagine, for, you know, it would be because obviously we're bringing Woody Harrelson and Tom Hardy and Michelle Williams back. But I was kind of hoping, where are we going to go from here? Besides those three, that's like our trinity of main characters, probably for this movie. But what are we going to do? And Shriek popping up and being possibly played by Naomi Harris would be awesome. Uh, you know, I think that would be really, really great. And uh, and having maybe we might see She Venom again. So having you know She Venom fight Shriek in a scene in this movie could be really cool too. Uh, so I'm wondering where they're going to go with this. Uh, I hope the Naomi Harris talks and negotiations work out I, it, it sounds like shriek is you know it sounds like she's in this movie uh so because I, I was still like hesitant i'm like uh i still want to know like i don't see anything foolproof nothing fully announced uh, officially announced uh but it looks like it's happening and if it does i hope it happens with naomi harris i never would have thought of her for this role but then once i saw her as a you know potential casting choice and in talks for it i'm like please seal that deal i hope she gets this role i think she would bring a lot of weight to that character and i think seeing her and woody harrelson on screen together and seeing her play someone because I think she's in that new movie coming up called Black and Blue where she's like the sole cop that sees like dirty cops do something and she's in a neighborhood where they don't want to help her and stuff like that and I was like wow that's that's a really great role for her too and uh, and and she plays all these different characters so I'd love to see her play like a full-on psychopath in a movie as well um so yeah we'll see uh but what do you guys think are you excited for Naomi Harris I certainly am I hope she gets the role and uh, if she does obviously we'll make another follow-up video at some point about that uh but uh, I'm keep my fingers crossed for her this is really great news and I hope Sony and everyone make this happen and like I said the movie is going Going into pre-production so that's why some of this news is coming out like casting and stuff because they're gonna that stuff's gonna start leaking anyway when they start filming if they're doing pre-production now they're probably gonna be in pre-production for a while I'm gonna talk about pre-production and what that is and what it entails and how you know like an average amount of time pre-production is needed so it looks like if they just entered pre-production recently chances are that this movie will not start filming until early next year uh, so those reports that we heard uh, before is uh, possibly true now and I'm guessing that they probably won't start filming until January or February and I think they're filming over in London but they'll probably start sending second unit crews out once they like finish pre-production and planning they might start sending second unit crews out to like cities like you know um you know, San Francisco and wherever else, you know, they're going to do to get exterior shots and establishing shots and things like that. So we'll see. I'll keep my, you know, ear to the ground, try to hear uh, any information I can for you guys and we'll report it as soon as we can. Uh, but obviously we're coming up at the end of our third season. And after episode 5th, 450, uh, I am going to take a break, probably a month off, because I think 450 will probably be around mid-November. 
And that'll put us around the two year anniversary of this show, actually. So two years, 450 episodes. That's a lot. We're nearing 2000 subscribers. So thank you guys. I'm glad you're supporting the show. I'm glad you're liking it. Uh, we will have more content coming up next season. Uh, season four is going to focus on Agent Venom and Flash Thompson and his run as the character Venom. But we'll also touch on some Venom, Eddie Brock stories we haven't talked about yet and some other Carnage stories we haven't got to yet either as we ramp up for the movie. But mostly we're going to talk about those things, past stories, not current stories. I think I'm going to cut out doing the reviews for the Donny Kate stuff uh, from now on and uh, after Absolute Carnage ends just because money and I'm tired and I just, you know, I'm not really digging it uh, fully and I just want to talk about things I do like or at least explore things that I feel comfortable exploring where I'm not giving away comics for free by spoiling the whole thing. I want to go back and look at old stories because I'm like, ah, it's, it doesn't matter spoiling those too much because hopefully me talking about it will get you to go in the back issue bin and buy them. That's what I'm hoping anyway. So uh, yeah, we have a lot of stuff coming up, but let me know what you think of Naomi Harris for now. And then one of the next episodes we have coming, I'll work on a pre-production video and we'll go through pre-production and talk about what the schedule might be like for the Venom 2 movie, which will come out hopefully next year, but don't be surprised if it gets a little delayed. I hope again, they shoot it because they're shooting in January, February for in London. It's gonna be cold there. I'm hoping they plan for like a Christmas movie and they they release, they push the release date back to maybe December and release this at Christmas and you have like Venom and She Venom and Shriek and you know Carnage all running around in the snow fighting each other in one scene uh just the the contrast of the the colors and the designs of these characters uh with the snow and stuff would look really awesome and then like cutting each other blood splattering all over the snow um yeah i don't know why i just I, every time i think of sequels and and christmas stuff i think of like um you know batman returns where it was kind of set and it was snowing a lot in gotham at that time so i don't know i'm just i'm I don't know. I'm weird like that, <laughs> but let me know what you think. All your ideas. I'd love to hear them down in the comments below. We'll continue our conversation down there and we'll talk more about Naomi Harris if she gets the role very soon. And then we'll also talk more about pre-production and then the last of the absolute carnage tie-ins. There's six more issues left and we'll wrap those up too before issue 400 or episode 450 of this show. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. We'll see you in the future. Peace.